just a land of extreme everything. And he said, son, start praying. And I did. It started as a whisper on the wind, an uneasy shift in the silence of Oregon's high desert. At first, it was only numbers, temperatures nudging past old records in places where the landscape was more accustomed to winter's bite than summer's scorch. On May 6, 2025, Salem crested at an unusual 82 degrees. Portland blazed to 85. Even Eugene, held in the gentle bowl of the Willamette Valley, ticked up to 79, brushing aside the kind of spring coolness that usually lingers well into May. While these readings set the record highs for 2025 so far in these cities, they also underscored a rapid seasonal shift that had many residents on alert. If the headlines weren't about wildfires or drought warnings yet, they soon would be. But something stranger was brewing, not up in the sky, but underfoot, where arid winds sweep across Redmond, Crook River Ranch, and the barren flats of the Oliver Desert, people began to sense something unusual. It wasn't just the warmth or the sharp scent of sun-baked earth. It was a feeling that something was stirring beneath the crust, a restlessness that couldn't merely be explained by thermometers or weather maps. Some reported hearing a distant boom rolling across the sagebrush-dotted plains like thunder in a cloudless sky. For the people of the high desert, these moments didn't just herald another hot, dry season. They hinted at a brewing mystery. The clues weren't falling from the sky. They were etched into the land itself, temperatures rising beyond usual spring limits, the persistent threat of wildfires, and stories of subtle, unexplained sounds. What is awakening in the shadowed corners of Oregon's high desert? Is this just another fluctuation in the fickle dance of weather and climate, or an early warning sign from the Earth, trying to speak in a language we're only beginning to understand? Let's travel deeper into this vast expanse, a place where heat, stone, and mystery are converging, and follow the trail of evidence left by nature's hand beneath the glaring sun. The Desert's Forgotten Pulse. To wander the Oregon high desert, is to stand in the presence of ancient forces. Here, the sky seems impossibly wide, pressing down on a land defined by sage, juniper, and stone. In winter, the air cuts sharp, while in summer, the ground itself becomes an anvil for the sun's relentless hammer. But even in this land of extremes, the heat this year feels different, not just as a passing inconvenience, but as a phenomenon hinting at something deeper beneath the timeless dunes and bluffs. While the valleys to the west saw records tumble, Portland at 85, Salem brushing above 80, it's the desert heartland where the impact of these warming trends resonates most. Predictions swirl of a long, punishing summer with hot, dry conditions forecasted through the season. Locals around Bend and in nearby communities remark on the thin shade of the ponderosa pines and how, at Summer Lake, columns of steam seem more prominent at the hot springs, even early in the year. This isn't just about numbers on a thermometer. It's about patterns, history, and the silent resilience of the desert itself. The Oregon High Desert is no stranger to wild extremes. Its wide, sun-blasted valleys have seen an endless migration of heat and cold, drought and flood. Yet, the recent pattern isn't ebb and flow but relentless escalation. The old seasonal rhythms, the reassuring pulse of winter snows soaking slowly into spring have faltered. Even after a wet winter, the ground dries quickly as dry weather and higher temperatures prevail, leaving wildlife and wildfires in a race against impending drought. There's an electricity in the air, a sense that the land is restless, responding not just to climate cycles, but to a deeper trend. The desert is heating up, steadily, unpredictably. From Redmond to Crook River Ranch, people notice changes. The ground seems warmer, plants more brittle, and the air tinged with a tension that eludes direct measurement. What's driving this fever beneath the surface? Is it merely the hand of global climate change, sketching new lines across the map, 
or is the land registering stresses that go beyond the obvious? Thunder without storms, the booms across the Badlands. The mystery deepens not just in degrees, but in sound, a sound that shouldn't exist. In early spring, residents across the high desert, including the Redmond area and Crook River Ranch, reported hearing a thunderous boom rolling across the landscape. For a brief moment, the desert paused, birds scattering, cattle turning their heads toward an empty sky. There were no clouds, no flashing bolts, just that unmistakable percussion echoing across the desert floor. Speculation spread. Was this an earthquake, a distant explosion? Some wondered about the military ranges far to the south, but local seismic stations picked up nothing, no tremor, no aftershock, offering little in the way of explanation. There have always been stories of desert sounds and mysterious noises in the high desert, but this boom stood out for its timing and its reach. It arrived just as temperatures began their relentless climb. Those who heard it described how the sensation seemed to come through the earth itself, not just through the air. Without clear data, the boom remains a riddle, a reminder that the desert silence can be shattered in unexpected ways and that not all change is easy to see or explain. If the skies were silent but the ground spoke, what message did it carry? Sometimes the earth is capable of delivering a warning in ways that escape immediate explanation. The land etched by heat clues in the Alvord Desert. No region embodies the tension of Oregon's high desert more starkly than the Alvord Desert. Here, at the foot of the Steens Mountain, the ground stretches out in a bleached mosaic of salt pans. If you look closely, you might see the faint ghost of ancient lakes or the remnants of vanished waterways. Lately, another kind of change is being noticed. Features etched into the hard pan itself, rather than appearing in the sky, this recent mystery surfaces in the land. Observers have reported strange formations, subtle fissures, and shifts in color, where the ground once seemed uniform and still. Some days, the surface feels unusually warm by morning, and on cooler evenings, Locals notice columns of steam rising from springs as if the ground is releasing energy from below. While there's no hard data confirming a drastic change to the temperature of the Alvord's famed warm pools, some visitors and locals mention that the springs appear more active or steamy than usual for this time of year. The dry air, always a feature of the region, at times seems even harsher in recent weeks with plants and lichen parched on the sharp black lava. If the Alvord Desert is a kind of diary, what story is it telling now? In this landscape, where the Earth's crust is thin and volcanic history is part of everyday life, the changes, subtle though they may be, do not go unnoticed. Are these changes simply the latest chapter in a long sequence of climatic fluctuation? Or do they hint at even more dramatic geological processes stirring below the surface? For now, the answer remains as open as the desert itself, written in patterns across the salt and sage. Wildfires razor edge, dryness as a warning. If one measure of a changing land is fire, then the Oregon High Desert is writing a new chapter in ash and smoke. Wildfire has always been a risk here, sudden and destructive, but as high temperatures persist, and green fades to yellow, the land teeters on the edge. This spring, forecasters issued a warning. Despite a winter flush with storms and the hope it brought, the warm and dry conditions returned quickly, leaving the ground thirsty. Grasses become tender, trees, some standing for generations, wait, vulnerable for the next spark. Oregon faces an elevated wildfire risk due to a warm, dry spring and predictions of hot, dry conditions through summer. Meteorologists speak in cautious tones. If rains return, if thunderstorms stay moderate, but the numbers are stacking up. Wildfire risks are officially elevated, higher than usual, they warn. Communities brace for a difficult season, routines interrupted by advisories and concern over distant smoke. Families in Bend, Redmond, and elsewhere across the high desert watch the horizon anxiously, aware that the cost of delay is high. Wildfires are not just consequences, they are indicators. They reflect the shifting lines of risk and resilience in a drying landscape. With every fire, the cycle of loss and renewal quickens, 
a pattern that in an atmosphere warming more rapidly than in decades past, threatens to depart from the regular cycles of the past. What is fueling this volatility? Is it simply a combination of land management and climate trends? Or is it something intrinsic to the stressed, changing land itself? The marked increase in wildfire risk is a warning, as plain as any. The human imprint, museums, memory, and the will to adapt. Against this tide of change, high desert communities turn to both science and heritage. If the land is shifting, how do its people adapt? How do you preserve the connection to a region whose unpredictability is its new defining trait? The High Desert Museum, on the outskirts of Bend, stands at this intersection as both resource and refuge. Its new EL Vegan Ponderosa Playscape, opened this spring, invites children to play among recreations of landscapes now threatened by heat and drought. The museum doesn't just showcase beauty, it acts as a living record of what could be lost or transformed. Exhibitions range from desert insects and fossils to mussels, and even the mythic Sasquatch, reminders of the desert's diversity and the mysteries that remain. The Sensing Sasquatch exhibit, debuting in 2024, explores the culture of the elusive in the wild, a fitting metaphor for the subtle, often elusive changes underfoot in the desert landscape. The High Desert Speaker Series gathers storytellers, land managers, and scientists to reflect on change, the wildlife, lands, and waterways of Oregon's high desert. Their stories capture resilience, but also the urgency of adapting to land that's moving beyond old definitions. People adapt however they can. Ranchers adjust their grazing. Firefighters innovate. Schools expand science curricula. But how much change can be managed? And how much must simply be endured? Culture, memory, and community action form a bulwark. But some changes may test the limits of even the best preparation. The heat beneath, wild springs, and ancient wells below the surface, the desert holds more than dryness. It conceals the restless heat of the earth itself. The region's hot springs, places like Summer Lake Hot Springs, described by its proprietors as a healing retreat, offer tangible evidence of water meeting the deep heat of the earth. These places appeal as oases for comfort and relaxation. But as temperature patterns shift, Locals and visitors take notice when springs seem to run hotter or emit more steam, a symbol, perhaps, of the way both the surface and what lies below can be changed by patterns above ground. Geologists observe these places for what they can reveal about the subsurface world. Changes in spring activity, more steam, slightly warmer pools, can reflect subtle shifts underground. Each spring becomes like a sensor responding to the balance of groundwater, tectonic activity, and climate at the surface. While few measurements from this season are available, the impressions are enough to add to the network of observations. The land is not just surface, it is process. The waters rise, heated by the earth, and released in cycles sometimes as old as the land itself. In times of change, the familiar comfort of a hot spring can take on a new, more ambiguous meaning, a comfort and a warning, depending on the observer's perspective. Nature's archives, fossils, owls, and the echo of change. Change is recorded in nature's chronicles as well as in numbers. The high desert is a trove of fossils and living witnesses, a record of transformation and endurance. In these stones are the memories of wetter, greener lands. In the present, the flight of owls, the growth of juniper, and the calls of insects all tell stories of adaptation. The High Desert Speaker Series includes topics on wildlife of the high desert, from owls to insects, as well as fossils and even mussels, each reflecting a piece of this changing world. Fossils remind us that the desert script has changed many times before. What is barren now was once abundant with life. But today, changes are arriving faster, and animals and humans must both adjust in real time. Current trends test this resilience. Insects shift their patterns as moisture retreats. Mussels face changes 
as snowmelt arrives fast, leaving less for rivers to sustain life. Owls must adjust, their habitats receding as fire and drought redraw the landscape. Each animal, each plant, registers the change, sometimes subtly, sometimes dramatically. Humans are part of this archive too, not just as observers, but as participants in the unfolding story of the desert. The question is not what was, but what will be, and how quickly those changes will arrive. Storms, silence, and the boundaries of knowledge. In a world fixated on measurement, even silence is data. The high desert, often cast as a place of emptiness, reveals misdirection in that assumption. This is a volatile landscape. What seems quiet one day can erupt into storm or fire the next. On days when temperatures race into the 80s, the surrounding cascades and eastern slopes can experience radically different weather. A winter storm, warning for mountain areas, while the desert floor bakes below. Such contrasts highlight how sharply Oregon's climate divides, sometimes within a matter of miles. Warnings are routine for the region. Most recently, a winter storm warning issued for the Cascades, Eastern Slopes, and areas south of Bend until 11 p.m. one day this spring. Yet even when snow piles up in the mountains, the desert below can already be burning under mid-spring sun. The relationships between moisture, temperature, and risk grow more complex. The same land that supports winter recreation can be moments away from wildfire. The only constant is unpredictability. This new reality outpaces models and stretches the capacity of local knowledge. Each advisory is a reminder. The margins between seasons and disasters are growing thin. As the sun drops behind the western hills and the desert cools, if only briefly, a sense of uneasy anticipation lingers in every shadow. Oregon's high desert is heating up. The rising thermometer is only one clue among many. The full story is written in cracks, in sounds, in the behavior of animals, and the caution of people. No single chapter explains what is unfolding. Instead, the mystery deepens. Subtle changes in the earth, booms with no known source, and a string of advisories marking a season of risk and recalibration. The landscape absorbs the sun's assault, while also transmitting whispers from below, a call to pay attention, even when evidence is less than conclusive. Communities respond, gathering in museums, around campfires, at speaker series. Children are registered for programs on owls and insects. People probe the rich fossil beds for lessons in how change unfolds over time. The goal is not mastery, but understanding, to hear what the land is saying as clearly as possible. Heat alone is not new, but heat that lingers beyond its welcome, that stresses plants, water, and wildlife, deserves careful attention. Whether the source is climate, geology, or a combination, the message is unambiguous. This land is not as it was. It is alive, restless, and changing. Will the coming months bring another round of surprise booms, harsh storms, or relentless drought? Will changes above and beneath the surface resolve into something more predictable or simply lay the groundwork for further surprises? Whatever happens next, the land will remember. The desert does not forget its mysteries or the times when secrets rise, like heat from deep beneath the surface. Stay curious, stay observant. And remember, in the vast quiet of the Oregon high desert, every shift, every tremor, every unexpected warmth is a story the land is telling. One, we are only just beginning to understand. Like this video if you want the latest updates on Oregon's unfolding natural mysteries. Subscribe to stay connected to the stories rising with the heat from beneath America's most enigmatic landscapes. And let us know in the comments. What do you think the desert is trying to tell us? Thanks for watching and never forget, even when the earth is silent, it is never truly still.